We are now going to digress a bit into an example that manipulates the heap. It it's going to perform some arithmetic operations on the heap. Uh, and this is just to highlight side effect operations. And then we're going to try to learn how to refactor them so that you can finally understand how to migrate your code um, in homework six. So let's look at the following uh, example. Let me actually copy it. So let's see what it does. It's a very simple program. It's quite verbose because we're manipulating a heap. So this pro prog one is our program. Uh, what does it do? It allocates x with one, allocates y with two, and then it allocates z, which will contain x plus y. So x and y and z are references. So read example using the heap. Okay. Okay, so now let's see what we want to do. So we've defined all of that. We our function prog one takes a memory as a parameter. And now what do we do? We pass the original memory to the first allocation and after that we get the value and get the second heap and then we perform a second allocation and note that we're using the output heap from the first allocation and then we unpack it again so we do the y and the h3 and then what we do we take the resulting heap h3 and we pass it to the next operation which performs get and we finally return the allocated result, h3. So now what we're going to do is we want to be able to run this program. And what does running mean here? Well, running just means, in this context, I created a function run state that is just doing very something very simple. It is just given a function which is not which is going to be an effectful operation and a heap so such as this function this is let's call this an effectful operation we say that it's an effectful operation because it returns an effect so the return is an effect so we can even annotate here the the contract of this so what is the input it's going to be a heap And what is the output? Um, well, the output is going to be an EFF. Okay, perfect. So now what, what does our run state do? It's very simple. It takes, it takes a heap, right? And then it takes a function such as this. So a function that takes a heap and returns an EFF, correct. And then um, this is the first parameter, the second parameter. What does this return? Let's see, it returns EFF state. Okay, so if it returns the EFF state, the state is gonna be another heap. Perfect. So we have this. So this is just a helpful function, helpful function to call an effectful function. So this is the effectful function. Okay, so now um, I'm just going to pause the video to make sure I have all the files that I need. I'll be right back. Okay, um, I've just moved my files. Let's see what we have. I'm using, I'm going to be using homework 5 util for this, for this exercise. So it'll require Okay. 
tweet, let me comment this out so we see later what it does. So I'm going to create a starting heap, which has two handles. You can even do quote heap h. Okay, seven. If this works, complaining about quote heap. I wonder if it's five. Quote mem. Oh, okay, that's what we should be using. Oh, quote mem actually won't work here. Actually, let me pause and, and write the. Uh, we can copy paste. Okay. Okay. Let's let's do quote heap, which is not defined. It takes a heap, returns a list. Um, quote hash. Data. Yeah. Quote, and then we're just going to return the whole thing. So we're just going to do lambda x returns x. Okay. And ignore what this does. Let's see what it's complaining about. Quote hash. Public. Let's make that public. Is it complete? What handle is public? So this provides. It's just saying what are the public functions. In general, for for your homework, I try to minimize that set of public functions. But for the sake of this exercise, since I need to roll my own heap. Okay. So here I have a very Simple example, my memory has three handles, one, two, three, E0 is assigned to E1, to one, E1 to two, and E2 to three. Okay, perfect. I have a way to print out my memory. Now what do I want to do? Let's say I want to call this prog1. So if I do prog1, and I pass this, heap h, and then I, I get Let's see. I get this ugly thing. So as you can see, I see an EFF. So what is the result? The result is allocation. So let's ignore the, the result. And actually what we want is just the state. So let's look at the final memory. You do that with, you can do EFF state, right? Okay, if I get I get a heap, now I can pretty print the heap. And if I do that, okay. Now I can do quote display before. So let's see what happens. If we run our prog1, we start with E1, 2, and 3. And what we do, we allocate uh, two references and three. So we're allocating x, y, and z. And that's why we have three new references there. OK, so this is working as expected. Um, so what did I do after? After that, I just did. Um, so quote mem, you already know what it does. It just prints. So what does run state do? Run state simply calls the function and prints out the memory, returns the memory. So in this case, we're like function. Okay. 
So rather than doing yet have state of prog1, I can just do run state uh, and pass the function and the argument. Okay. Run it again. Complaining about. Oh, actually, I think I let the sound. Okay. So now it works. So you understand what run state does. It just calls function prog1 and passes h. Um, we've seen what the prog1 function does, and we saw an example of calling it. Perfect. So now let's go back to the slides. So one thing you will start noticing is that this thing is happening quite a bit, right? Where we this pattern and this pattern is basically the same. And this one is also another command. So you can imagine that there are two stateful operations going on here. One is for numbers, for allocating a number. And the other one is to add two numbers together. So let's try to generalize prog1 to generate these two effectful operations. So what we're going to do now is we want to refactor this code. Right? This is going to be always the same. If we want to refactor that, copy paste it here, define num. OK, so what is the number that we want to allocate? Let's call it x. No, let's call it n. So the number n. And now we have these three commands. That's what we want to do. Hmm. So now what else do we want to do? We want to somehow parameterize the heap. Let's see uh, what we do. We always have a heap as a parameter, right? So if I'm trying to generalize this pattern, It would be cool to have a function that generates something that encapsulates this. Right, so let's try to do that. How do we do this? We create a new lambda, which is the memory called h1. What does h1 do? H1, the only thing it's going to do, it's going to allocate. And then, hmm, okay, so H1 is pretty simple. H1 is just going to allocate it. Seems pretty, pretty silly so far. It's not doing much. So, how do we call this? We want to replace this by num. We would do num and then and pass same didn't do much we just changed the order of parentheses pretty pretty minimal refactoring so the next thing we want to try to do is okay so let's do so i did the next let's try to refactor this code so this code is easier. Let's do define uh, add. Addition takes two references and returns and performs an allocation, right? So it takes a heap. Let's call it age. We can rename this to age. Okay, so we are allocating the whole thing. I forgot to do this. what we should be returning. What is the heap we're allocating is that one. What is the heap where we're reading is also h, x, y. So x, y are two references, and we simply refactored this call. Pretty simple. So we're just making it a bit more semantic. And also, we're playing with these parameters. We'll see why we need that in a moment. OK, so now you've understood this code. I think I can replace it. How do I replace this? I do add. I do x and y. 
Actually, here I do y and x. So you do x and y just so that the order makes sense. Here I do x, y, and x. Reason. And what do I do? I pass keep a. Basically, what we did. So if we implemented these two functions that are just refact refactoring what our intent. Our intent is to allocate a number, and this one is to add two references together. So now our code is as follows. Right? That's exactly what we have here. So what do we want to do? Now, notice that we have this pattern happening. And we have this pattern happening, and it's the same. So it would be really cool to refactor this, right? Now we kind of see something that is very repetitive. Okay, so what would we like to do? Basically, what we want to do is we want to generalize threading. Okay, so this is a, an effectful operation, let's say. And this is another effectful operation. So if I want to thread one and the other, what do I need to pass? Well, I would like to pass behind the scenes the memory, right? I would like to pass this H2 directly to my continuation. So let's try to refactor this code. How do we do that? Let's see. Let's call this define bind. Then we're going to explain what that. Is. Okay, so if this is a bind, it will do something. And as before, this is going to be an effectful operation. So let's use the same convention where we pass the parameter of the heap as a second call. So now instead of number, let's just call this one parameter. Let's call this the, the operation that we want to call. Let's call it f or effectful course. This is our effectful op. How do we call an effectful op? We pass the heap as we are doing right now. OK, and then what did we do? Then we have this x and we have which is the result, right? And then we have h2, which is the new memory. Let's call this h1. Okay, so ideally I wanted to, you know, after this do that, right? I want to allocate the second number, but I don't actually know what's going to follow. Right? So let me just return a continuation. I'm going to call it continue. Okay, so the continuation. What is the continuation going to do? Okay, so continuation is going to be something that if I call it continuation, I should pass x. Okay, and if I pass this x, which is the result, that should return new, new effectful op. Okay, so the result of all of this, I need to pass a function, right? So what should my function do? We are trying to generalize these effectful operations. So it should be something that given the result, it returns me a new effectful operation. And how do I call an effectful operation? Ah, oh, that's very simple, right? I just pass the memory to it. I do new effectful operation and I pass h2. And the return value is going to be an effect again. So I just pass this and I close this. Okay, so now let's see how can we chain two things together. Let's see. Let's see what this does. Before we go back to our code. So first let's give examples of all of this. Let's see if the code runs still. See, okay, it runs. So if we pass num of one, what do we get? We get a function, right? We get this lambda. Okay. So that's pretty boring. So what do I do if I 
run a number num one right because num one is also an effective operation so if i run it saying forgot for instance somewhere for instance here If I run it, I simply allocate number one. Let's change this to nine, nine, nine. so it becomes a bit more obvious. So if I run my effectful operation number, what it does is just simply allocates the number, which is what we wanted. And if I want to add two things together, let's say I want to add two and three together, I would do add, add, and I would do handle uh, one and handle two and this should add this should create a new handle that has five let's see if it does what it should be doing okay see number and add work correctly they are changing the heat correct you see the allocation of five because it read two and three let's see what happens if we do zero and three 0 is 1, 3 is, um, sorry, 2 is 3, so this should return 4. Let's see if it does that. Okay, that it did allocate 4, so addition is working and number is working. So now let's see how we could use bind. Bind, what do I do? I want to do the following. I want to do now some bind what do I want to bind I want to do bind of num number 999 okay now the second parameter is going to be a function lambda what is this function the function takes the result what is the result of allocating this number hmm let me see the result of allocating this number is is whatever heap lock returns Mm, so that's going to be the handle, right? So it's going to give me the handle of 999. So if it's going to give me the handle of 999, this is going to be the reference R that holds 999. So if I do heap um, get, yes, heap get of my heap. Oh, actually, this is kind of. Ah, I can do uh, add and I do R, R. Okay. So R is going to give me the result, the reference where I allocated 999. So that's interesting. If I use add, so I just define addition. The one thing I can do is in my continuation, I'm going to run that. So bind is going to invoke this and the return of 999 is going to be the handle and let me add add with add so i'm going to allocate a new reference that adds two tw two times r so let's see what that does no can i run it do run by Okay, so now I need to save the file, of course. Close this. Put all the parentheses here. Okay, so what this is going to be doing is going to be allocating this 999, assigning that to R, and then we're going to add R with R together. Let's see if this works. Okay, so we have 999 and we allocated something else, E4, that has 1998, which is adding 99 together. Okay. So now let's go back and try to refactor this code again. 
So we want to do one effect operation, take the result, and pass the second result to um, be available here. So let's try to do that. Now what do we do? We do bind, bind of number one. So first I'm going to change the code and then I'm going to explain. Okay, and then I want to take lambda x going to be the continuation. So now x is available in this function. So what do I want to return? I want to return um, second one and two. One and two. Okay, and I want to do a bind. I want to assign number two to lambda y. And finally, what I want to do, I want to do x plus y. Allocate number one, allocate number two, that gives me number one stored in x, number two stored in y, and then I'm going to add them together. One more, let's see if this still works. Oh, I need to define bind. Didn't I define bind? Num move all up. Okay, I need to move all this here. Okay, and now let me instead of calling this. Let me call what I had before, which was just calling prog1. What did I do? Prog1, okay. And I've allocated see the two the three allocations so program one is still doing what it should be doing okay so that introduces bind the refactoring of bind and yeah and that's basically it so now I highly recommend you to try to go this step by step and try to see how bind is performing how does it work um because that's the better way, best way to understand it if you just look at it it's far from trivial but the basic idea with bind is that you want to refactor the continuation that's the key point and the way you have to do it is with a function so the way you think of it is i want to assign this number to this variable i want to assign this computation to this value so that's where the result is going to be held and the state is going to be implicitly passed around in our next lecture, we're going to learn a few more patterns or another, other uses of this bind and, and um, effect pattern.